number seventh video on this bike. I'll have to look at the sixth one. Know how to make a reluctor wheel, some of the stuff like that for this video to make sense. Here's the issue. You're gonna make a custom bike from scratch, but you have to buy that motor as a turnkey. It has to have a computer. It has to have a distributor. It has to have points. It has to have some kind of timing system to make that motor fire when it should fire to make the motor run. Unless you're a dumbass like me and you just go and buy a motor with no electrical system and it doesn't fire. You don't realize you need one. So yeah, if you made that mistake or if you want to make a custom motorcycle, maybe a motor you found, an old Banshee engine, let's say, or a uh, 1945 knucklehead Harley and you don't have the electrical system and you want to make your own. How do you go about it? So watch the other video and you'll kind of see the mechanical part of it. And now we'll get into how to do it. I have searched the internet far and wide, searched every YouTube video. Can't find information on making a custom ignition system to fit your custom motorcycle from scratch. It just doesn't exist. There's gotta be people out there doing this. So hopefully this video will help you. Here's my homemade reluctor wheel. When this piece of steel passes a magnet, it creates a signal to the CDI box. Dylan Cox, I don't know if you've seen his thing like this, but it's pretty badass. It's on nitrous and everything. But Dylan Cox was laughing at my reluctor wheel because how small this is. And that does make sense. I was measuring this off a much larger flywheel. When they get small like this, if you look at like a Harley Davidson one, this metal tab takes up half the, uh, the circumference of the reluctor. So the signal doesn't happen when the magnet detects to the steel. The signal happens when the magnet doesn't detect the steel. So it kind of cocks it when it hits steel, and then when there's a space or a gap, it releases it. I'm gonna modify my reluctor and put more steel on and make it longer. It'll release at the same point. So where do you even start with ignition timing? I know this is top dead center, because I've got it lined up with this mark when the engine's at top dead center. So that's all I know. Right now the engine's at top dead center. I've got a mark on my reluctor wheel and I got a mark on the engine case just for reference. If we have the timing too advanced, bad things can happen. The spark and combustion can happen while the piston's still in the upstroke and it can work against itself and actually break things. That's uh, pinging, knocking, that's the stuff that damages stuff and blows hole in pistons and cracks pistons. We don't want that. If I have the timing too retarded, I just get a loss of power and some overheating, no big deal. So retarded is safe, but it's not very performance. With retarded ignition timing, you have safety, but you might have lack of performance to the point of no performance. Imagine the piston gets to top dead center, squeezes the fuel, the exhaust valves open, the engine's rolling this way. And as it goes around, the exhaust valves open, it starts releasing fuel air mixture that's been compressed and then the spark plug happens. It's just gonna go Phew whatever. So yeah, no performance. So to get performance, we have to get that timing to happen right when the combustion chamber mixes that gas and fuel and squishes it, but not too early or we'll damage it. So it's a pretty critical thing, but if you're going to make an error, error to the side of retarded timing, retarded timing is after top dead center. Advanced timing is before top dead center. So here's top dead center. On your car, you'll see a flywheel and there'll be a marker on it. Remember the markers up here on the engine itself. So we're going to call this the marker on the engine, the indexing marker. So before top dead center would be somewhere over here. As the engine's coming up on top dead center, we need it to fire somewhere here, not right there and not after top dead center right in there. So we want that spark to happen somewhere in here. Here's what top dead center is going to be, but here's actually top dead center. So right now the crankshaft, which is hooked to this, is before top dead center. This is where I want it to fire, somewhere in here. But where? Most every engine in the world runs 10 to 12 degrees before top dead center at idle. And that's usually where you set it. So I've got to figure out what 10 degrees is on this. Now I'm going old school primitive for this. Got my uh, third grade protractor. We're just going to call that 10 degrees. It's going to be close enough for what we're doing. 28's really somewhere in here. There's 30 right there, so... This is really about 28 degrees. Now we're gonna hook a timing light up to it. The timing light hooks onto the spark plug wire, goes to the battery to power it. Every time that wire fires, it shoots the light beam and the light beam will light up and you'll only see this mark when it fires. That's the only time you'll see this mark. And we want this mark to be right there on that 10 degree mark. We're just trying to get this thing close. We can fine tune it later. I just don't wanna blow the motor up right away. So let's start it up and time it. ran pretty rough, so I adjusted the air fuel mixture screw. I backed it out until I got the best idle, and I brought the idle back down. That air idle mixture screw is the quality of your idle. 
This is the RPM you want to idle at. All that's doing is raising that slide. It's like giving it throttle. Same thing. So now the conundrum is, does it run crappy because I need to adjust the carburetor, or does it run crappy because I need to adjust the timing? There's a pretty rough idle. Let's see what we get. So there's my top dead center mark way down there. You see it? That's at like 50 degrees, maybe 60 degrees, 70, hell, I don't know. That could be 90 degrees before top set center. That's way too advanced. It was way too advanced, and advanced is the dangerous one. It's firing right here, and I want it to fire right here. The common thought would be to loosen this and rotate this that way so it fires up here, but that's actually wrong. If I rotate it this way, I'm going to make this thing hit that even sooner. Remember, it's going this way. That's gonna be even more advanced. I actually have to take this thing and rotate it the opposite way, and that's gonna retard the timing. So it's bass backwards. Here we go. And why it's backwards, I've rotated this back to top dead center. The thing to keep in mind is that this top dead center mark is not top dead center because I'm about to rotate this thing. I'm gonna get a new top dead center. So I'm if I try to make an adjustment based on what I see here, I'm gonna make it the wrong way because this was not even accurate. So what I've gotta do is rotate this even more backwards and make a new top dead center mark to see how far advanced it is. So we're gonna do that now. I marked this crankshaft top dead center also so I can keep that lined up with here so I have a reference, I have a reference free of this. With this at top dead center, now I want this function to happen later. We want to retard it more. It was way too advanced. So it seems at first you would want to rotate it this way away from this to make it happen later, but it's not. That's gonna make it happen earlier. Think of the function, don't think of the tab right now, just think of the function happening right here where this is. So it's happening right here. This is according to the top distance reference, and we want it to happen later. So we wanna back it up so more rotation happens before this hits that. And we were about 70 degrees or so too far, so we're gonna go, go quite a bit. I'm gonna go about right there. That's quite a big movement. We're just gonna try that. Because I moved this reluctor, here's top dead center on the crankshaft, and here's my reference mark. Top dead center on the reluctor is now right here. So that's a whole new line. And that's the line we're concerned with now, that we want that line to be 10 degrees before top dead center. So let's see what we get. Yeah, see how much better it started? So much nicer. It seemed to be running better. That was quite an improvement. Pretty good. It's about uh, 20 degrees before top dead center. So we can go a little bit more. We won't fine tune the timing until after we get the carb sorted out, but we gotta get the timing at least close. Then once we get it running good, we can fine tune that timing how we like. But for right now, if we can just get it to time at 10 degrees before top dead center, then we know we're golden. So this is where top dead center was, and it was hitting about 20 before. So we're gonna make this happen a little bit less before. So we're gonna retard it some more. So we're gonna go away so this action happens even later. Right there, this is all guesswork. Now I have to get rid of this mark and make a new top dead center mark because that mark no longer applies. Pretty close. Oh, it starts even better. It runs even better. Oh, look at that. That looks pretty good. I don't know if you can see it. Do a couple of adjustments. Run that air idle screw. That's worse. You come back out. That's better. Let's see if I can go back out even more. I didn't plan ahead putting this carburetor on here. That's better. That's pretty good. I'm gonna bump the idle up just a little bit. Still some backfiring in there. That's not good. I don't know what the hell just happened. If ever you're timing a car and your timing keeps moving, you gotta replace your counterbalancer that has a timing wheel on it. The rubber in there is moving around, throwing everything off. And that's what just happened to me. Look at this thing. This is all loose. This thing was moving around. Gosh darn it. I gotta tighten it better than that. That's what we heard. That went crazy. But it did look pretty good and it seemed to start out pretty good before it loosened up. So let me tighten it back. I've gotta line up that crankshaft with top dead center with that and with that mark that I made, tighten it back up and try it again. All right, we got them all lined up. Timing take two. Like everything, it was all going good till it wasn't. I think I'm getting pretty close to 10 degrees there. Advanced and 
nicely at high RPMs there at high RPM we want it more around the 20 mark so I'm gonna have to bring it back and advance it a little bit but yeah starting to sound like a real motorcycle good deal I think from here I'll tune that carburetor for a bit and maybe revisit the timing but definitely making progress who would have thought there's so much to know in building one of these bikes look at the foot pegs I put my feet on them and my toes hit the ground Can't even turn a corner. Yeah, I'll have to get some riser foot pegs to bring them out here more. Get my feet up higher and a little bit more forward. I was going for that look that they have on the Tron movie where the guys are riding their Tron bike, but yeah, that may be just a look and not functional. I gotta get my feet more here. the needle one clip position and it seemed to work pretty good so I took it back out and now it seems to break up at a little bit higher rpm and what's concerning normally that would be well it's too rich you're off that needle you're on the main jet you need to go to a leaner main jet but because we're messing with timing we have to also realize that at about 3000 rpm all of the advance should be in so if the advance is not coming in right or if i've got the initial timing off and it's not advancing enough or advancing too much it could be detonating at above 3000 rpm so what i did was i stuck a really small main jet in there to crispen up that higher rpm just to make sure it wasn't due to a rich see how that works still breaking up when i get up to uh, rpm i don't know how many rpm that is i don't have my tachometer working yet it takes off good and it kind of breaks up Made the reluctor wheel a little bit bigger. You can see I added on some more metal. Hopefully it'll give it a more positive set when I get going faster. I got the timing where I like it, about right here, so I marked it. And it's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good. And now I'm gonna go and tune the carburetor because I don't wanna be tuning this timing when the carburetor's screwing me all up. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with that. You know, they all tune the same. I've got tons of videos on these PWKs. Then when I get the carburetor where it runs a little bit better, I'm gonna go back and play with the timing some more. But it's gonna be very minute things from here. I mean, we're talking like a hair. That mark's pretty close. The adjustments are gonna be tiny. Well, temperature gauge quit working. I have no freaking idea why, so I'm leaving this open so I can uh, try to troubleshoot it. I don't know, it just quit. I still haven't hooked up my tachometer. Got my gas gauge hanging down here, so quite a bit of wiring still to do. When I go to uh, turn a corner to the right real far, my key hits the handlebars and it turns the bike off. That's crazy. So I don't know what the hell. But the brakes work great. You can't beat that. You hardly ever get those things working good. Those guys aren't going to wave at me. Still pops and backfires some. I don't know if that's carburetor or timing. Maybe a little bit of both. But it runs real nice. It handles nice. It's uh, smooth. The shocks work great. Yeah, if I can get it running good, I'm pretty happy with it. Feels nice. 